I'm very happy to be moderating a panel of really five very interesting people. Just before we started this session, I had a quick chat with each of them to understand what kind of businesses they run and uh, truly some really interesting ideas they have gone on to implement. And uh, when you speak of communication to commerce, I remember something that I had read about uh, 18 years ago when uh, Vodka named uh, uh, Grey Goose was uh, put out at some of the most elitist parties of Europe. Uh, what happened then is that it picked up, uh, uh, you know, everybody wanted to know what that brand of vodka was. Uh, what eventually happened is that it got acquired by Bacardi because it thought that, uh, you know, it, it, a challenger is coming up because it had acquired the right mind space in the sort of consumer that every, uh, in a sense, brand desires to have, uh, you know, the consumer which has a lot of money they can spend on the brand. So creating mind space through communication. That time, communication was placing it in the right uh, kind of parties where they placed it free of cost. Of course, the quoted price tag on each bottle was much higher, six times higher than the prevailing hot selling vodka then. But that story is for another day. May uh, we? Uh, the panel has been introduced and uh, without, I've got less time. So without going into the specifics of each, we'll start with Ayushi Gidwani. She's founder and CEO of Fable Street. Uh, Ayushi, over to you in the first two minutes. You could explain your business model. Uh, also, what you've been doing over the past four or five years. Um, thank you. Uh, glad to be here. I run an organization called FS Life, which is previously called, which was free, uh, previously called Fable Street. We are actually an online um, apparel brand transitioned from one brand to house of brands over the last two years. Started Fable Street about six years back with the idea to uh, break through the supply chain challenges of um, of India in apparel. Uh, the brand is corely anchored around fits, but at the back end, we are a supply chain tech company. We build inventory in two weeks, as opposed to the competition, which takes about six months to build inventory. That's the core for us. Um, over time, we have built one brand for the last six years. And uh, then from 2021, we transitioned from being one brand to a house of brands. We have supply chain as well as uh, demand generation uh, technology with us. Therefore, we decided to capture the brands in the entire women's uh, premium Western to all apparel spaces. So that's how the journey looks like for us. Thank you. Thank you, Ayushu, for briefly explaining it. I'll go to Ishan Grover, he's founder of Swish. Ishan will speak about his journey and his brand. Thanks. Uh Hi, I am Ishan Grover, co-founder for Swish on the go. We are a personal hygiene brand. Uh, we started in 2020 during COVID times and our prime focus was to bring hygiene as the most important discussion to topic in the country. And uh, we basically uh, target the audience between 16 to 35, which is Gen Z millennials. And that's where uh, most of our business revolves around. And uh, currently we are... <laughs> more focused on men intimate hygiene which is an untapped market which has never been explored and uh, uh, hoping to be uh, category leaders in that thanks Th thank you ishan this also reminds me of about uh, in the late 90s and the early 2000s you had a series of articles in newspapers in the usa and europe talking about why men who are clean shaven are more desirable to women uh, this ended up increasing the sales of gillette uh, because india gillette never advertised uh, it it was simply an article was placed in each newspaper saying why clean shaven men are more desirable. These days, of course, it's the opposite. Uh, you say bearded men are more desirable. So, you know, the marketers decide how men, you know, because there is always this cliche thing that uh, women are in a sense, uh, uh, you know, wooed by ad campaigns and articles. But uh, history teaches us that men indeed uh, are also influenced by things like this. So, uh, you know, uh, if you see an article why these days men with long beards look cool or they are desirable to women, you must know that a lot of startups have now been funded by uh, the kinds who make these kind of products. But that's a discussion for another day. I'll go to Pranesh Chaudhary, he's founder and CEO of Zan Pulse. Uh, Pranesh, if you could share uh, the story of your brand. 
Thanks for having me here. Hi, I'm Pranesh Chaudhary. Uh, I founded Zunroof Tech Private Limited, which is the company's name about six and a half years ago, uh, with a bunch of friends and ex-colleagues. And over the last six and a half years, we have tried to solve for electricity's consumption and supply in Indian homes. Uh, what we mean is that electricity has been a very neutral technology. Not much has changed in the last hundred years. Uh, you know the fans, lights, and heaters and geysers that you have been using, and nothing has changed. With the advent of internet uh, and the pro the how all of us want to control all the electrical products as well as everything in our home, thing, home on phone, uh, we thought there is a possibility to get it to IoT enabled electrical products. And what we have done is we have uh, created uh, hardware, firmware, and software, all three in-house, to ensure that you have the smart bulbs, the smart doorbells, smart cameras, smart fans, everything at your fingertips. And uh, we've been doing this for the last six and a half years, as I said, uh, been present in already 150,000 plus homes, uh, growing very rapidly. Uh, that's been our story th thus far. Thank you. Thank you, Pranesh. This reminds me of an anecdote of Queen Elizabeth, how you have to change with the times. She was dining with Barack Obama. They were staying at the Buckingham Palace. Queen has a time that she has to sleep at 10.30, but she can't annoy, uh, in a sense, uh, be rude to the President of the United States. So she nudged to a butler that I want this guy to now leave. So when she nudged and uh, then Barack's assistant was nudged, told Barack Obama that, uh, you know, the Queen wishes to sleep. That's her time. Barack was in, in a mood to drink. So they in the end ended up drinking till 2 a.m. Guess what happens when Barack Obama goes to sleep in the bedroom? Uh, there are no toilets in Buckingham Palace uh, bedrooms because Buckingham Palace was made long ago. Toilets are outside the room because as the modern pumping system is very recent, we just had a hole for whatever business we had to do is to fall down. So it is outside. So you had the president of the United States late at night making four or five trips to the loo, which would have been quite inconvenient. So, uh, but that's how the British are. They like to keep things traditional. Uh, so that's how it is. And you move with the times, uh, uh, you know, uh, before I move on to my next speaker for the panel, uh, I recently in a party met uh, one industrialist who acquired a bungalow for about 160 crores. He said, Tarun, could you tell me the name of the brands uh, where I can get all the latest electric fitments for my house? So people are curious. People have the money and now they want to go and spend on these products. So Pranish, uh, this gives you a lot of hope and a lot of business, I'm sure. Uh, we'll go to Dheeraj Kumar Tiwari, he's co Founder CEO of CapGrid, uh, Dheeraj, over to you for uh, your comment. Thanks, Tarun. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm founder of CapGrid. Uh, we are about two year old, founded in uh, kind of 2020, uh, right in the middle of pandemic. Uh, we aggregate uh, automotive component manufacturing, uh, uh, which is kind of a complex business to be in because automotive is a 120 year old industry and uh, how manufacturing is being done hasn't really changed in those years. Uh, manufacturers still want to go directly with the supplier who has got the plant equipment and capacity uh, and, and deal with for each and every part, whether it's a very important engine component or whether it's a bolt in the bumper. Uh, and, and that's where I think uh, uh, the role of content is coming in as well for B2B, that we are able to enlighten our supplier's factory to them uh, what kind of material is coming in is it from tata steel which great jindal steel uh, what kind of manufacturing processes uh, they are following right i mean they are supposed to follow what kind of quality rejections are happening right and, and through that content additional content we are able to put some trust in in large automotive uh, oems who are uh, kind of also listed and, and where safety is very important so that's the space we operate in uh, i founded it uh, after working in automotive supply chain consulting space for about 12 years. So uh, yeah, looking to kind of transform how uh, automotive manufacturing is being done, not only in India, but but globally. Thank you so much. That's interesting. Automotive is about 7% of our GDP. It's a very big industry, actually the backbone of Indian economy. Uh, so all the best to you, Dheeraj. We're going forward to Atul Rai, co-founder of SACU. Atul, uh, your brand and the story. So <clears throat> my name is Atul Rai, and I'm running an AI startup called SACU. We are uh, using existing CCTV cameras. Uh, to solve the problems of security, safety, and different kind of analytics. So broader way, we are working with 
police forces uh, to catch criminals we are the only organization which is managing 45 lakh criminal record in the country and uh, currently we are uh, utilizing 22000 cameras across the country to analyze the feed to identify let's say violence is happening in front of the camera so you need not to put a human in front of it uh, ai will identify there is a violence happening or there is a fire happening in front of the camera so that's the that's the thing we are doing uh, broadly our customer base of course security we have all the police forces nine state police forces working with us prominent cases like siddu musewala to uh, different other cases being resolved with that uh, in terms of uh, that is a one part of the security in terms of the retail part uh, of course cctv cameras are everywhere when this room is also having cameras but we treat camera as a dumb device i mean we do don't do anything so we are using that uh, data for further analyzing for retail industry let's say footfall analysis panogram analysis where the people are sitting what product they are trying so in that way we are also working with starbucks cafe coffee day raymond crocs so those are so we are like 180 degree opposite kind of a brands we are working with so that's the story and that's we are trying to i mean work for this country i mean solving security solving safety and solving also the retail problem statement using the cameras i just like to add no so i think uh, i have got a camera at my house my my 6 month old when he gets up and starts moving it gives an alert to us in the other room so we are, we are using that very powerfully you don't have to continuously look at the camera but the alert comes automatically so i, I i'm pretty sure there are going to be more uh, strategically important use cases of that uh, in future yeah, that's interesting to know the research uh, now uh, we go on another topic of communication to commerce i've always been fascinated Fascinated why people will pay ten thousand for a hush puppy shoes, about fifty thousand for a Bally's, and about one and a half lakhs for a Louis Vuitton. Uh, it's all about communication, the mind space you create in uh, the mind of the consumer. Of course, the product quality is relevant, but we all know that manufacturing cost is a fraction of the price of what these products are retailed at, and that's why communication is so important. The perception you create in the mind of the consumer could. Make a difference between millions and billions. Uh, we start with uh, Ayushi uh, Gudwani, and she will share with us her story about how she uses communication to create a mind space in the market of the consumer. Thank you very much. Um, we run a B two C brand, and we primarily target women uh, in professional and overall workspaces. So for us, communication, I would say, is actually the core. um as you rightly mentioned the product has to be the hero and product has to be the king but today in consumers mind trying to capture their mind share and wanting them to believe um you know in your product and consistently hold them uh, uh, make sure that they are buying your product over long term you have to be their top of mind so so eventually communications i would say is the most critical aspect within that i would say what what do you communicate which is the content and then what is the channel of communication both of them are extremely crucial after you understand what your tg wants and what you want to hear in our case uh, we anchored our brand around fits from a need based perspective of women's western wear the biggest challenge in the market is fits so we had to anchor the brand around fits it resonated so well with the target group and consumer and that's why they love us for what we do and how uh, they feel beautiful and confident when they wear fable street so that's been our journey on communications uh, with the consumer channel is equally core when we started back in 2016 facebook was really big over time instagram has become important um snapchat is still not our tg so we keep on consistently innovating and figuring out what are the newer channels to explore and go back to them and reach out to them the communication i would say is an ever evolving strategy what's important is to stay true to the brand and core of what you're doing ensuring you are consistent in your messaging but at the same time being open to what's moving and how is the consumer reacting to your communication is how you typically work with it so that's a little bit about how we do it and what so you're talking of a really dynamic strategy where you alter yes. change every couple of months you have to yeah you so. have to ensure that um, you i mean consumers actually have very limited mind space and in today's world you know when you can barely like hold their attention for 5 seconds so it's extremely important on how dynamic you are in your approach to communicating to them so that they can remember you and ensure that they come back to you that's interesting to know ayushi will go to ishan grover founder of speech for uh, his communication uh, to commerce strategy so uh, 
Our our whole company's DNA is built on advertising. My co-founder was National Creative Head for Rediffusion Mumbai. He's built some really really large brands in this country over span of his career. Uh, we are actually an ad agency come a startup. We are, my whole team revolves around best of the creative directors, best of the writers, and some of the greatest advertising minds. Uh, probably work freelance and some of them in our office. and uh, i think uh, the reason we have been able to scale so fast and uh, so much in a short span of time we just finished 24 months this november uh, it's because of the communication that we have created and how fast we have created how relatable the content is because i am talking to a 16 year old to a 30 year old the communication here is very very different from what we usually should see in a traditional advertisement but our focus has always been one content is king let's make the best content let's make it relatable i i have a 45 million social media reach i don't even spend that kind of money we my content on a, on an on an average level one of our ad goes viral uh, minimum 5000 shares on instagram on its own so we uh, we believe in content a lot and uh, i think uh, that's going to be the core focus for us as well and that's how the large brands are built as well if i'm able to communicate my uh, product and tell pro- people what my product does how it solves their problem and connect with them at an emotional level that creates a larger impact in the market yeah, indian when you speak about building brands it's so important during covid most hotel chains dropped rates i spent a lot of time staying at hotels all over uh, in my interactions i found out one hotel chain didn't drop below 12 thousand a night and i had a interesting uh, chat with the cluster head he says you are losing revenue they say no we creating mind space people will know we don't discount and we will earn more money after covid because they will know that we are a premium band while all other hotel chains will lose value because they are discounting 60 65 70% so that's uh, that's that's one of the ways to look at it we'll go to pranesh chaudhary co-founder of zanpulse uh, for his communication to commerce chat my thoughts are a bit primitive actually uh, i think content has uh, like the topic was content uh, co- to commerce success new success mantra i don't think it's a new success mantra i think branding has been around as as early as you can imagine commerce right somebody has had to talk about their products to explain to the customers uh, like if you read about the early days of let's say dabar floating a big balloon over kolkata to explain to people what the, uh, just just grab that mind space of dabar's name right or uh, and then it evolved over time where people became more and more subtle in their ad placements right like, like there would be movie is in which an actor or actress would work in a certain bank or a certain uh, company so that you just thought that okay this is very subtle they are working there and it means like uh, uh, if an actress is working there it probably is a safe place for women to join that bank as well uh, what has changed over the last few years when we started all of us our journeys is that uh, the channel as uh, ayushi was mentioning uh, th- that the platform that we are interacting with the customers have completely changed uh, there are very uh, the customers have very limited time now to interact with your ad but in our case especially the product that we are selling these are not impulse purchases you do not buy a solar panel or a smart clock or a smart fan because you like the ad a lot right so we have had to be very careful in how we position our ads how do we ensure that the customer because it's it's always easy to just think about brand 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 that people will remember the name and it will not convert into any commerce for you because yours because mine is a product which you will only purchase where there is a need if you if your older fan or geezer has run out of it's life despite my fan or geezer being smart you are not going to buy it just because the ad was really nice so we had to be careful we have had to be careful about that in what do we message about it the great thing has been with these platform coming up is that you that the customer or the audience can actually interact with the ads right earlier you saw an ad on tv you did not have a call to action immediately now there is a call to action so given you can measure so, so it allows the advertiser also to customize the ad per the audience again for our products the ad purchaser could be anywhere from a 20 year old to a 70 year old right like we were talking three panel as well so now what it allows us is that we can cater to each demographic according to their needs so let's take an example of a smart fan or a geezer this is more about saving your electricity bill because it's smart you can use your app to schedule it switch it on or off remotely and all those things now if it's a 60 year old person mostly they will be they'll be very happy that this saves their electricity bill somebody in their 30s or 40s might be happy because it provides them a convenience or as you were mentioning about the camera giving you a feed when you're worried about your kid uh, but if somebody is a teenage or a young adult you need to appeal to their laziness because they I mean, might not want to get up to go to the switch so what 
what the new platforms allow us is to do ads according to the demographic and then target them. I have one more example on this. Uh, we were like in our uh, earlier days, we were selling solar panels a lot uh, as a way of creating a clean and smart brand around uh, messaging around ourselves. And we tried two messages: uh, go green and make money from sun. Uh, given the TG is always going to be somebody who owns a house, 35 plus year old kind of person. Go Green did not get us any results at all. Like it was like at least one by like 100 times better results came from make money from sun. Because there the messaging was quite clear that you will make money by putting solar panels on your rooftop. So that's been our... Neeraj, your business is also very interesting because you have two addressable markets. One is directly the consumer, which is B2C, but also the seller. If you have a distributor in between, uh, I remember of a recent anecdote where uh, a leading brand took all of its distributors to a curated palace meal in France, uh, which was exclusive because the palace was not open for normal tourists. That ensured that there was more push for their product at the distributor and the retailer level. So they treated the distributor and the retailer as an addressable market and they push the product so that's why you have uh, your your thing what you do is interesting i'll do atul rai co-founder of stack you for his uh, input of course Thiraj can come yes Thiraj uh, kumar tiwari of uh, yeah, cap thanks no so see we we are a p2p startup and uh, i think uh, the whole uh, advertising or content or uh, communication is uh, very different for for us uh, uh, an instagram ad or a facebook ad uh, kind of is, is not valid at all and, and we are also in the early days of learning the ropes of communication but i see kind of two phases of that uh, when we acquire an oem to whom we are supplying kind of components uh, it's not like it's a one-time contract which we do because they are producing thousand ten thousand vehicles every month so we get that recurring demand and uh, to, to make sure we are that trusted partner for next five years right which is we typically sign a five-year contract with them uh, we need to make sure like i was earlier pointing to that the quality is being communicated very clearly he doesn't have to scramble uh, what all has been done with their part right uh, and to doesn't lose confidence in the quality. Uh, very important that if I have promised I will deliver these uh, 50,000 kind of uh, shafts for your factory so that you can make those 10,000 cars. They need to be there, otherwise they lose a full day of production. So giving them, communicating them on, on, on uh, where is that part right now? How much I have in my warehouse? How much is on the way from my supplier manufacturer to my warehouse or my warehouse to their factory? I think that's a very important part where we have largely focused so far that acquiring a customer is, is mostly a direct sale, but, but making sure he stays with us for five years. Uh, we are now trying to kind of break into that uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, advertising, marketing activities to drive new sales. So for example, at, at Auto Expo, which happens every year, uh, after happening after two years in Pragati Madan and uh, Greater Noida, we are one of the largest kind of advertiser to capture that mind space because every major OEM in India as well as a lot of them from globally buyers are coming to to attend that and and I thought we may not have a lot of kind of components to show but if we can grab that mind space later when my team reaches out to them uh, uh, they will have uh, slightly slightly easier recollecting those thoughts so I think that's how we are trying to grab that mindset we are also looking to organize kind of discussion events like this with uh, with kind of maybe head of supply chain from each and every manufacturer in India, right? Planning that in the next six months. So that's our way to kind of uh, uh, manage the content which, which, which is helping indirectly in our business. Uh, thanks. And uh, what I could with the takeaway is that familiarization helps. People are familiar with your brand name. It helps your sales team push sales, you know, because yeah, the, the second part. And then the first part, which I think is more important for us, yeah. is kind of that continuous uh, visibility to what we are doing. Yes. So uh, now I go to Atul Rai, co founder of StackU, because you are also, uh, in a sense, B2B. Your addressable market is, uh, in a sense, government departments. Also, now you spoke of Starbucks, and that's your another market. So you'll have to tell us two strategies that you use. For both of them. Yeah, so we actually, what we did is we started with a product which is our platform is called Jarvis. 
so uh, of course the name is taken from marvel movies i will not cover up it but uh, so uh, when we started jarvis to basically capture like using the cctv cameras to analyze the feed the initial target was to basically go for let's say a, a b2b market and of course the retail stores uh but just think of like camera when you see like the camera the first use case for anyone who is putting camera is security right so if i'll go to the retail store and say hey, i want to put analytics on this into 115 i'm talking about so no maybe they will not give that kind of uh, attention to you right so we decided uh, let's go first this technology with the security agencies and in that we chosen the police forces i mean that was a one of the most toughest sector to target and uh, even in that we targeted punjab police uh, because when you perform a face facial recognition on punjabi faces so you have a beard you have a turban you have a mustache and all different things right so we went there and we within a month we caught around 300 criminals with the facial recognition and the product was like super success in that way so we don't had any didn't had any marketing uh, team there so nine state which i'm talking about is all inbound leads i mean we didn't had any 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 so trust was first thing which which we has to uh, get in the market after that of course when we started getting the trust we targeted the manufacturing where we were working with tata we are working with tata projects we are working with tata consumers we are working with jk borosel uh, marico everyone right after that then we came to the retail part so trust is the first thing which you want to capture to the your whatever you are doing of course for us initial was our media interaction because media also wanted to capture i mean what we are doing with the cameras to cap the catch the criminals right we were not didn't have the, that lot of money to basically invest on uh, marketing event and all right so this is how our strategy worked uh, getting the trust why what you are doing of course if you have a capability you uh, you can show in terms of your accuracy we caught around 22000 criminals eight terrorist module got the state so that basically give you the trust for the market right and with that trust when you go to someone in the private sector of course they welcome it and we are now i mean one of the largest video analytics and video management system in the country which is actually started from india rather than from israel or japan so this is this is this is how i mean we are capturing while we will building the trust and uh, going to the market Th- thank you atul for sharing that experience and recently uh, i booked a meal of a michelin star chef where six of us went we had a good time and many of people did not know that there are no michelin star chefs there are only michelin star restaurants so uh, what what i am talking of is a tire company which managed to enter a restaurant space and started to brand restaurants and in turn made so much of free uh, what you can say ad space or mind space it could gain because you know you bring out a list it gets followers and you get virtually free ads because people are talking of michelin all the time not realizing it's in the end just a tire because and whenever you see a michelin ad it's a multiplier effect so that i think is one of the most successful brand building uh, campaigns that michelin undertook and i don't think many other brands have been successful at uh, this uh, with that i think we have to move to a, a round of closing comments i'll start with ayushi gudwani and then uh, in about 30 seconds each no i think um, the conversation around the panel and content and communications is one of the core ways to drive commerce in today's world and as he rightly pointed out you know it's just the times that have changed but the core principles really haven't changed so just ensuring that you know your consumer well you are finding the right content for them and the right channel to reach to them is the core way to go thank you thank you thank you ayush i have go to ishan grover sorry can i take slightly more than a 30 second <laughs> so yes uh, michelin is a great example that you gave uh, i remember mrf bat for longest of my time i was thinking sachin's bat is by mrf and mrf makes bat and i had no idea so it's a great example and there are several people have done that just wanted to highlight while i was just listening to everybody and uh, one thing that i've seen has changed is now we get so much of data that we have restricted ourselves in creating brands people are so focused on what are the roas what is the metrics what is the demography what who is my audience because facebook gives you every single insight now in that race you forget you're not creating a brand you're just creating a performance marketing tool and moment meta disrupts happen you know how like people in d2c understands this and this is a pain point for all the brands as well moment the cac goes high moment uh, 
something goes up you are screwed you really have not built anything it's just the sales that you are getting with very focused targeting which was able to get you that certain run rate but you actually never built a customer base so for us uh, i always believed in that and always tell people is branding goes very very long way content goes very very long way it might not have a very immediate effect but if you if you genuinely believe in building a brand which is at a large scale you have to invest in uh, content and content is the king and uh, that's it yeah thank you thank you ishan i'll go to pranesh choudhry for his closing comment i think hearing what dheeraj and atul said uh, kind of got me thinking that your product if your product is really winning the game you probably don't need that much of marketing to begin with uh, so i'll keep that in mind and yeah, uh, and the one point was which uh, was uh, i think uh, dheeraj mentioned in his first part uh, was about uh, how every touch point that you have with your customer should be used to communicate your ethos what your product stand for and that is what the like brand is just not what you see in a tv ad or the line or the catchy line that you remember brand has to be about uh, what the company promises to bring to you in terms of the product in terms of every touch point it could be a simple packaging it could be the simple dashboard that you show to a b2b client and that is how communication should be thought of oh. thank you pranesh i'll go to dheeraj uh, for his uh, no sure i think my closing comment is more like an ask from this group right uh, we have a lot of creative people here we have got a lot of founders who are continuously solving that uh, brand problem one thing which we we struggle with if we are going for a, let's say a, a pr campaign right? right uh, uh i need to give each and every line of what needs to go on that in that article unlike maybe uh, ishan or ayushi right you tell like it's a grooming product and then maybe couple of features and i'm sure there are creative people who can come up with like a very good ad which will not discounting your effort but i mean your team itself right uh, can come up with a very creative ad which may go viral but for us literally uh, if even if it's a pr agency or even if it's a very cool uh, kind of uh, marketing kind of brochure i need to write each and every line in that to to rightly communicate what we are doing so i believe we need kind of more uh, uh, content uh, or like pr agency media agency who also have the uh, the the functional depth uh, so that as founders we don't have to kind of uh, handle that much when we are running a campaign i think that's that, that would be my ask i don't know if uh, if this is the right audience for that thanks i understand you need to be really more creative because the product itself is not uh, you know it's 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 in a sense b to b so uh, creating an appeal is even more harder but atul rai your uh, closing comment so of course i mean when you talk about content it is more about like getting the mind share of someone right i mean of course in our case it is a bit different because we are dealing with that content which is video data i mean 70% of the content on internet are videos or images from tiktok to instagram to everything right so getting the information from and getting the depth from those information and creating a right uh, uh, basically uh, uh, knowledge base for your audience is something which is important of course uh, so we are working on the one layer up on that those content are coming to us we are just trying to create a, a knowledge base so that a decision making can be done so i mean uh, yes uh, content is good but getting the right depth right targeting is important and where i think we as an ai company or many ai companies like us are working in that area to get some sense of that data and of course uh, that is how i mean the next level of the content marketing we go yeah thanks atul now uh, the two really interesting points uh, when many of branding studies came out with the result that uh, a lot of people will tell you that they don't want to buy brands they don't like spend spending money on brands but research again showed that the moment people earn money they want to and they afford and they buy it not being interested is just an alibi used to get on with the conversation uh, but when people can afford they do buy that is what research shows so many times if you do a market survey you get all the long results because people say no i am not interested so market surveys that time can be and secondly if your brand becomes a category and i'll end with this short story about 23 years ago rajiv bajaj uh, and his father rahul bajaj had a bit of a fight because they were doing very great at scooters and uh, rajiv bajaj 
Maharaj said that I want to see that the future is a bike future is what I see. And the father said, you're mad because we are selling the highest number of scooters. But he says that give me 100 crores and 12 engineers and only in this little budget, I will get you a bike. So out came the Pulsar. It was a groovy, sexy bike, which had the girls looking at you. This was the tagline that time. They never advertised it as Bajaj. They always said Pulsar because they wanted a category which had no, in a sense, baggage of the past. You see what happened. That bike, 22 years, 20, 20 years, hence is still selling. Another bike which came out during that time, which was the CBZ, is not selling anymore. In fact, it stopped production a few years ago. So when you make an attempt to make a category out of your brand, uh, in that case, Splendor has become a category for Hero. More than 55% of sales from one single product for such a one, for India's largest two-wheeler maker. It's only one model that generates so much of sales. So when your brand becomes a category is when you end up dominating the market. But uh, I would like to thank each of my panelists. There's, uh, you know, pearls of wisdom from each one of them. They run businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. So what comes out of them is out of real life experiences. So I would like to thank Ayushi, Ishan, Pranesh, Dhiraj and Atul for their time and for joining me today on this panel. Thank you so very much. And please give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so very much.